Hey trainers, Poke Dad here, along with the dancing bear at first base. KK Shiv one to eight. Great beast in the natural habitat. Yeah. Day on Pokemon deck check. As you can see, we've got chaos on the table, and we're gonna do our best to make sense of it. Real quick, who are we leveraging? Ink Gaming, your answer to all your customizable tabletop gaming needs. Did they are? Check them out. Leave a link in the description. Now, Anaheim. Expanded. Lost Thunder's legal. And right here in front of you, I don't know if you can see all of them, but you've got, what, 26, 27? 27. 27 decks. Not saying that all of them are... Top tier. Top tier, but... I think you have to anticipate seeing... Uh, any of these, right? Yeah. And uh, we're going to do our best to make sense out of this. This is going to be a long video. I'm sorry. But, I mean, when we have to cover 27 different decks to try to get you prepared, it, it, it is what it is. We're just going to try to get the information out there to you as best we can. So, um, <clears throat> I think we'll do it in kind of two sections. We'll give... Kind of the tier decks on what we feel is uh, going to be the most popular. And then part two, we'll kind of go into what we feel is uh, strong plays. And this is uh, based on our testing, but uh, you'll see just some random cards. There's decks that we haven't built and tested. So in those cases, we just have to theory them on, right? Yeah. I mean, it's not like we're going in the dark. At some point, we've played the archetype, so we are extremely familiar with it. It's just, uh, you know, we have 27 decks. So, it is what it is. Stuff gets missed. And if your deck that you're wondering about is not on there, know that we have done all that we can to try to figure out what might be played, right? We have. Okay, so... Let's start, we can just start eliminating the easiest ones. What is going to be the most popular? What has the biggest target on its back? What do you think people are going to play? What do you think people are going to see? You can get that side. Okay. So I what? have Thy Chosen Trevenant. Definitely has the biggest target on its back, I feel like, even though it got second place, right? Mm-hmm. So... It's it's really good. I think it's one of the safest plays. Um, Especially if you already have the cards. But if you don't have a rescue scar, there's most likely not going to be any chance of you getting Yeah, you, you have to play it with rescue scarf. And rescue scarf shot up to like $20 each. And now most of the places are sold out. So you're definitely going to see Trevenant for sure. And that's all age groups. The other deck, uh, clearly tier one, Zoro Toad. Okay, so we saw Pindarvis dominate, expanded with it. Uh, he beat Aaron Tarbell's Trevenant, but that was a Trevenant not built to deal with Toad. It didn't have the Faba, the Flare Grunts, Faba, Zorosic, all that good stuff. So keep that in mind. Our Trevenant list plays two Faba, one Flare Grunt. And it easily deals with Toad. Yes. Unless for some reason there's prizing issues with your Fabas. Or if so. you can't draw into them with the Sycamores. So yeah. So um, The other deck I want to fit in there. In kind of that uh, triangle. Is actually Blastoise. Okay. Now... Latest intel from a few cups, expanded cups, in mainly Florida. Uh, Altavilla played Trevenant, Caleb, Gittimer, and I'm sorry, there was another one. Caleb and another deck, or another guy, went one and two seed with Blastoise. And in our testing, Blastoise is a thousand percent legit, right? Yeah. It, from our testing, we get the Archie what? 
90, 95% of the time. I'd say around 95. But the problem is, is sometimes you get awkward hands and you may have to overextend a little bit. And against like Toad Zark, it's best just to scoop and go to a game three, right? Or a game two. Yeah. Because the next uh, hand, you're just going to go up, pop off and just destroy him. Just run rough shot right over him. And it's so good now that you can't Wally turn one, so you always get a chance to Archie's Blastoise, right? Yes. So, we we definitely like the Blastoise in this triangle, and I would put kind of a uh, Toad Garatina in there too. And that's with the uh, Garatina that comes from the discard putting on your bench. Super aggressive deck. This can beat Trevenant, right? Yes. And depending on how good of a start you get, you may not be affected by the item lock, right? If you can get your trades going on, then you're all set up. Yeah, if you're struggling to get set up, then Zoro to Toad's going to own you. But the key with this is to take two prizes uh, against these two decks. It's, it's more difficult with the Trevenant not being able to take two prizes, but against this... If you just DCE and take for sure two prizes, then if they fob it, it doesn't really matter, right? No. <clears throat> uh, Blastoise, if it still pops off and gets going, it still beats this, right? Yeah. So, this is one of those decks. Uh, it's a combo. When it works, it works. When it doesn't, it doesn't. Most of the time, it does work. Your best bet is to somehow kill the Keldeo or Palkia. And then have them item lock where they can't use superior energy retrievals or they can't get access to their fishermen. So that's where the deck kind of struggles. Now let's go in. Anything else on tier one? I think that's about it for tier one. Would you say those are kind of the four strongest? Yes. Okay. So let's go into tier two and... I actually think Alolan Exeggutor could be really good here because of its Blastoise matchup, its Toad matchup. Uh, what, what do you think? Or, or you think that's a little high? You think maybe it's tier three? Um, you can't use Propagate Trade. Or the Propagate, not Propagate Trade. But... You can't use it because if you put it down on your bench, then Trevenant's just going to do its 30 spread and then one-shot the eggs so you can't ever set up another Exeggutor. So you think it's going to really struggle against Trevenant? Yeah, I kind of do. Okay. Fair enough. So unless, let's... unless you have ways to get back the Executes that aren't the 30 HP with Propagate, well, it's going to be a rough matchup. Okay, let's address... All right, let's hold off on that then. Let's address Buzzwall because Buzzwall is always super, super good in Expanded. Uh -huh. And I think we have two variants, Buzzwall Lycanroc, and do we have Buzzwall Lycanroc Ninetales? Nope. All right, I just grabbed out the, uh, right the one Buzzwall. version. So do we see it uh, being popular? Yeah, it could. I you mean, think so? Trevenant's still a scary matchup, but other than that, it's pretty fine. Well, I don't think it beats Zorotoad. Oh, then... Mm. I don't think it beats either one of those, do you? I don't think it beats Trev, but I'm not sure about the... That one. I don't know if it does. And I think the... I think Zor Garatina is kind of pretty aggressive. I think I think Buzzwall could still beat this one. Mm -hmm. I don't see it being beating Blastoise either. Fair enough. So, I think I don't I don't even think I don't think uh, I think based on popularity, it'll be tier two, right? People are still going to play Buzzwell Lightning Run, right? Yeah, it's an easy concept to just switch over from standard to expanded. Agreed. And for that, 
I think Gardevoir fits nicely in tier two, and I think it I think it sees an uptick in play because Buzzwall is its biggest threat, right? Yeah. And if it's not being able to jet punch and spread, then it's going to have a a, a a decent shot, right? I mean, of these, its hardest <laughs> matchup is Trevenant, right? Yeah. Because jet punch, the spread jet punch, and then uh, hex chain and hex with the Zorak builds, absolutely would destroy Gardevoir, right? That is what stopped it from being good. So there's no hex, and there's no fear of jet punch. However, I would argue that I think Trevenant is like really dicey, right? Yes. You have to play it different, like you can't use rare candies and stuff. So you have to go a more heavier evolution line with the Curlias, right? Yeah. But I mean, once you get a Gardevoir set up, how is Trevenant going to deal with it? Tree slam for six June twenty twenty. Because you still have because at that point you you have secret spring, so you're doing. So there's one energy on Trev, so thirty. The fairy sixty, and then DCE, say ninety one twenty. So you one shot the Trev. And if you run the Garatina promo. Yeah, you can run Garatina promo to shut off the item lock, and then you. Do, okay, now so we like Gardevoir. Yeah. So its most difficult matchup is probably Trevenant up until you get a Gardevoir set up, right? Mm-hmm. Once you get a Gardevoir set up, I think you steamroll Trevenant. Yeah. I think that's pretty easy because against the Seismic Toads, they're going to have a DCE. If you just have a Fairy, then you can two-shot the Seismic Toads. Yeah, easily. unless they have Fighting Fury Belt. So, yeah. And there's room for attacks. I mean, you have... Teammates, which is always super, super good in Gardevoir, right? Diantha. Uh, I like Gardevoir going into this tournament. I do too. So, um, you get your Old Faithful, your Octillery engine going. Oh, do you play Octillery or do you play the Swamper? Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know about that one. I think you I think you go back to Octillery. I think it's more reliable than Swamper. It's one less rare candy that you need in a heavy item lock meta. Yeah. So, but I, I like Gardevoir. We can circle back around the, on that. The next deck is getting a ton of hype. ton of hype. And that's Mr. Darkrai. With Naginatal. With Naginatal. Where is it? There he is. So Dark Ride, Naginatal. Ton of hype. Uh I I I see you destroying Trevenant, right? Yeah. Just three energies and playing you one shot the Trevenant breaks. Um in the Zoro Toad, they don't play Skyfield. So it's gonna be tough for them to one shot the Dark Ride. You do have Fighting Fury Bell unless you're item locked. And you, honestly, if they're going in with Toad. You can just go in with Naginatal. Yeah. If they try and discard the energy, you just pull it back up. Yep. I like that. I like going in with Naginatal against Zorotoad. I like that. That seems strong. Uh, Blastoise, you are going to take an L to that. Uh, Zor, Tina, I think that's going to be tough. They, they can one-shot you and it's super aggressive. So I think that's your L right here, right? Yes. I think, I think you have bad matchups here. But here, I think... I think you win. Yeah. And we'll have a uh, gameplay of this deck in action. Um, we'll record it and uh, upload it here pretty soon, right? Yeah. Okay. So, but we like that, huh? We do. All right. So, how many people are going to transfer Party Balloon from Standard? The it, Right now... I think you can make an argument for Party Bloom being the BDF in standard because I think there was like 15 or so in day two of the last regional. And then every age group, I mean, there's multiple in the top eight. So, and it got second place at the, the regional. My concern is I don't think it's that good compared to 
the other stuff that we got here. If it plays against Trevenant and it gets the item lock. Okay, but you have you could tool it to where you have the Ultra Beast Stadium, so you're not uh, Ultra Ball or Mysterious Treasure dependent. The Ultra Space. Yeah. They're running four dimension valleys. Yeah, but you play it on your turn and then you can use it. I mean, what do you think? I don't really like the matchups. You don't like the matchups against. I think that's not good. That's really not good. I think it. I think That's you're good here. Good. I think you're good here. Water weakness. Yeah, but they're not yeah. one shotting you. Nothing's one shotting you. Does they don't play Skyfield in here? So nothing's one shotting. They play Rough Seas and Parallel. So nothing's one shotting your Blaze Fawn in here. Mm. And this deck runs you out of energies. Yeah, you can't play B String. But you have the Naganadal, so same concept you have for Darkrai, you can do for the Blaze Spawn, right? There's no Naganadals in this one. But if people are playing Party Bloom with Naganadals, they can do that. Sure. So, I like the matchup here. What about this? Oh, that sounds pretty bad. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. You go in with the Naganadal. Trevenant has to four, four spread you. Five. Okay, okay. Five spread you. They still have access to Tree Slam and set up more numbers. Okay, so they have to do three Tree Slams. Saying that they already have. Or two Tree Slams and a spread. I'm not convinced Trevenant destroys Party Bloom. I think it's going to be hard for them to just set up. I agree with that. Bad matchup here. Oh, yes. That is an auto loss. Zorak is absolutely going to demolish it. Same with Blastoise. Too you fast. I think you you definitely auto lose these. I think you slightly win this if you play the matchup with Naganadal. Sure. What? How do you not? I don't know. I just... I don't think it would be that good. It's focused on Plumera and Lusamine and Parallel City and Rough Seas every turn. Mm -hmm. It's a control deck. It's not a hyper-aggressive Skyfield one-shot. It, it doesn't even play Choice Man. It's Fighting Fury Belt, so 40, so 80 damage. It's just it's an item-dependent it deck. I don't... It uses a lot of items. I don't know, me and the Dancing Bear can't come to a conclusion, but I think it's going to be super popular. I'm, yeah, I'd put it at tier two. Yeah, it's going to be super popular. Moving on. Um, Anything else tier two? Sableye Guard? As far as pop, no, it, it, I think it's really good, but I don't think it's going to be popular. This kind of... Greninja? Oh, yes. Um, yeah. You can put it on the side. Yeah, I think Greninja's tier two. And obviously, we don't have the deck built for obvious reasons. We absolutely hate the deck. Sorry. That's just the way it goes. That's the way Pokemon go. Uh, it's in a really good spot. Sad to say. I, th I think Blastoise struggles against it. You get the shadow stitching. Well, here's... Am I thinking on that part? It's gonna take two turns. One, three turns. Yeah, turn three. By then, you're already gonna have two Keldeos powered up. If you get Blastoise three turns, it's gonna have enough cards to set up two Keldeos and then just steamroll, where you won't even need Deluge anymore. What about if this goes first? And that goes no difference. I think you still get too many turns. Okay, so you're saying Blastoise is a bad matchup. Mm -hmm. Okay, the ultra aggressive Zark. You can shadow stitch to shut off the Garatinas, uh, shut off the Propagate, shut off Trade. My problem is you can just. Two shot the Greninja is fairly easily just two shot, two shot. 
get out of here. Two shot, two shot. So I think. Um, and you can get enough prizes before they take a knockout on your. I think this deck can set up the numbers with the Garatina, especially if they do water duplicates, right? And they have three on the bench. And the one active. And then you do a couple Garatinas. So now they're at 110 health. Rise speed. All day. Yeah. So they have to play a Faba or Enhanced Hammer kind of to slow it down to compensate. But I still don't see it. Do you? No. Um, against Control. I don't know enough about Greninja about how that would go. Well, I mean, if they play the Garatina promo. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Which, they're most likely going to play the Garatina promo. And that's something to keep in mind. All these decks, especially like Gardevoir, Party Balloon, even the Dark Rive Garatina promo and it, they can uh, run that and kind of deal with Trevenant and Greninja. So, I don't know. Uh, I think I think uh, I think it it beats Trevenant with the rough seas. Mm -hmm. So I think it auto wins Trevenant. I think it's going to have. If you're running the rough seas, then I think it actually has a pretty good matchup against the seismic toad. Probably because their damage output isn't going to be enough. Or forty, and you can heal thirty of it. Well, you're doing forty back to them, but you can use the giant water shuriken. So, I like I like Greninja against the top two decks, right? Yeah. So, I definitely think it'll be popular, right? Yes. Okay, tier... Anything else in tier two? Um... Do you think Zork Garbodor? Um... In seniors, yes. Masters, probably not. And you can use the cleft key, and it's not considered an item. I know. I think it's good. So you can play... And this. you can play the Garatina promo on it to deal with Trevenant. Well, I mean, if you're already running cleft key, just that bad boy. It's still too slow, from what we know, with Garbatoxin to deal with Blastoise. Yep. Same with Shadow Stitching. So... How popular do you think it's going to be? Um, how would the matchup here be? I think it loses because you have the item lock. And Clef Key's only good for one turn, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it loses to... Wait, wait, wait. I think it loses to Zora yeah. Control. And if, you know... What yeah. if you pre-attach the Float Stone? Like on the Trubbish? Well, it's going to have Baba too. I mean, mm. And if they're item locking you, and then they just be a seeker and keep the Faba, yeah. I, I think Zora Control wins. Um, um, that matchup? I think Zora Garb wins that. Yeah, because you can shut off their Zorg and their Garrett mm -hmm. I think Zora Garb wins that. Um, Trevenant, I think Trevenant wins that. What? No? It's got resistance. You're gonna be taking one shot. You can shut off the item lock. True, and you can play, uh, the Garatina promo to deal with that, too. Mm-hmm. There's enough That's room. fine. So, what do you think? I think Zork Garbodor would win that. So, you like... So it auto lost, win win. Mm -hmm. Then lose. So I think the key is if you can find a deck that can beat th three of these, no. or maybe one of these can beat the other three, then that's the play, right? Yes. Okay, so where do you have Zorak Garbodor? Because it sounds like you're big on it. <laughs> I think it could be tier two. I think it has that potential. Okay. While we're on Zork, what about Zorak? Where are we at with that? 
and one shot the Trevenant. And you got basic energy also. You have Bloodthirsty Eyes to get out of the item lock. Mm-hmm. You, there's definitely plenty of room for Tex to uh, deal with, like, the Garatina promo. Yep. I like it. Blastoise? That's probably an auto loss. It is a lot of energy to commit to hit the 210. And you can just Dangerous Rogue for one fighting with the counter game. I think you'd have to kind of tool this to more of like a Skyfield kind of build with the Lycanroc so you can easily one-shot. You're, you're going to have to easily deal with the Keldeos or the uh, Palkias, right? Mm-hmm. So it's seven energy that a Keldeo needs to one-shot a Sorok without a tool. One well, does five. Palkia does 60. 60. And then 20 more for each. So eight. Eight, yeah. Or seven, and then choice fan. That's 140. Yeah. That's quite a lot. Yeah. So where do you think Zorak is? Mm. People always seem to play it. I mean, it's popular, right? I think it's good, too. I think it's tier two. Tier two. So we got a huge <clears throat> tier two pile going here. All right, we'll just do it like that. Really? Okay. Just a little bit of space right there. Cover right. up Master so a tiny bit. How popular... Okay. If more people had access to Tropical Beach, then these two decks, I think, would be ultra popular. Groudon and Waylord. Go ahead and grab your Groudon. Where are these two bad boys? I think they're good. I think they're really, really good. Tier 3. You think they're both Tier 3? Mm-hmm. But I, I think they're better. I think they're better decks than Tier 3, but I, due to Tropical Beach, I think that lowers them, right? Yeah. But, wow. We'll circle back around on, <laughs> and we'll do each deck, compare it to each, but, uh, yeah. I like both those, huh? Yeah. Okay, while, while we're talking mill, Sylveon decks. More accessible without the Tropical Beach. You have Fava. Mill is probably like at a all-time high, especially from the last regional, right? Yeah. With Fava, with special energy everywhere... DCE decks. You can control the board. What do you think? I think it's pretty good. I think it's good too. But tier three? Yeah, because uh, I don't know how yeah, many people are go actually popular. Want to play it? Not that many. Not that many. I, I, yeah. Okay, now we're getting into, or you got something else? Uh, I think, I mean, this could be tier three. Yeah, I agree. And see, folks, this is nothing against how good the deck is. It's just because we're kind of juggling how good the deck is plus how popular it'll be. So, Sableye, wh what are you feeling on that? I mean, it's a good deck. Just, I think it has a couple iffy matchups. Like, Trevenant isn't going to be too good. This is all right because you're able to use Confuse Ray. That's not going to be too good because you can't just Confuse Ray to the Keldeo. That's an auto loss from every single testing we've yes. ever done. And then this right there. I, I'm okay with this. It's all, it's all right matchup. I'm okay with that. I don't see this being a bad matchup. You're able to just... Because I don't think they're able to get get enough knockouts, enough prizes. Before, before you remove, you, before you five out every single DCE away. So yeah. I like it against this. Yeah. I I think it's 50-50 on this. That's auto loss, auto loss. 
Yeah. So that's two rough matches, and I actually, folks, think that these two decks will be two of the most popular. I think I would rank them like one, two, three, four. Yeah, I agree. Okay, so knowing Zoro Toad and Blastoise is going to be popular, where does that leave us with Lost March? Leave us with a tier three deck. People love it. It's gaining momentum. There was three day two, one in the top eight. The list is dialed in. Expanded. Yeah, expanded. That's questionable. Oh. But item lock doesn't seem to hurt it as bad. Because you can still get your little grass dudes in the lost zone. You can still do your trumbeak. Item lock doesn't affect it nearly as bad as, say, regular Night March. And you can one-shot the Toad very easily. It, it, it's still going to lose to Trevenant. Don't, didn't, I'm not sitting here saying it's not. Got one more thing. What? Articuno. Yeah, that was always... You know, that always turned the matchup against Night March. Mm-hmm. But I think at the end of the day, you're still one-shotting Keldeos. You're still one-shotting the Articuna for one grass. Not the Articuna. I think it's weak to metal. I might be wrong, but... It might be weak to metal, but... Dragon Palkios. You only need 120. Weak to metal. I don't think it's bad. I think if you run the metal Palkios in this, it would be actually really good. No, uh, we just hadn't changed it. Or not the metal, the dragon. Yeah. I don't know. I think Gardevoir. Gardevoir is going to be more popular than than the little dude. For sure. Yeah. Okay, so what else? Uh, we're getting into like rogue territory, right? Or Yeah. Or Malamar, Decidueye, Gramble. Where are we at with these three while they're here? Do you think they're they're gonna be played? They're gonna see a lot of play. Not gonna see play. Do I think Malamar is gonna see play? I don't because of Zorark. Put that in the road. Yeah, I agree. That's gonna be hard because it's gonna be item it's, dependent. It's item dependent and it's slow. Mhm. Mm That's gonna be rogue because it's mega item dependent. Mega item dependent. And you have in to disrupt the hand. Yeah. Yeah. And red card. Deck that y'all aren't quite too familiar with. Teeny. We haven't showcased that. It's something the Dancing uh, dancing Bear's been working on, right? Yeah, I had the, an idea. The Lost, uh, Lost Thunder Victini that does 20 for each basic on your bench. Concert dancing bear. We'll try to get a video out of it in action, huh? That's the plan. Don Pan. Now, oh, Don Pan's interesting. Yeah, it is. But it's interesting because there was a few in seniors and a few in juniors at the last expanded tournament. Masters. <laughs> and that's why I'm not arguing it's higher. Uh... Shock lock. Mm. Now, I'm telling you right now. Ross, Ross is going to have some insane shock lock deck. But it's still rogue because at the end of the day, his group with uh, Sam Chen and Jonathan Paranata might be the only ones playing. It. <laughs> so it's, <laughs> it's rogue. Yeah. It's going to be awesome to watch it. I hope they have him on stream. But he's... He's going to unleash a massive rogue deck with Shock Lock. And it's going to be incredible. Maybe. What else you got? Your Vespaquin. Vespaquin. Well, we might only see Jimmy O'Brien and Raul playing it. But uh does have Blacksmith, folks. It's able to deal with the Faba from the Zoro Control. Uh, Trevin, it's still going to give you problems if you don't get set up uh, straight away, so. And then what you got there? 
Xerneas. Xerneas, now... Never mind for putting it in rogue. This is just a concept. This is just a concept. Same as uh, the Dark Ride Naganadal. Played the Xerneas Break with Naganadal that does 20 for each fairy Pokemon. So it's just a concept. It resists dark. That seems super, super good, right? Yeah. So it, it's just a, a theory mon, but I think it's good, and we'll get more into like the matchups, but I, I think it could work. I, w I would not be shocked if I saw one in day two at Anaheim. Ready for the next one? What you got, Dancing Bear? Night March. Oh, folks, Night March. I know you'll love it, but, man, there is... I. It's okay when you dodge one item lock deck all day, but when you're having to dodge two of them... I'd actually say this is another bad matchup. Yeah, because the Caratinas <laughs> can just spread the damage onto the... Joltix. And if they use Pumpkaboo, it's got resistance to Psychic. Yeah, I mean, you've got three majorly bad matchups right there. This deck's playing Karen. Travenet's Travenet. It can spread damage easily. Uh, I think your only good matchup is the Blastoise, right? Yeah. But I'd even so. it has the Articuno, which can take two prizes off your Night Marchers, plus it can pick off your Shamans. So, yeah, I think it's risky. There's going to be people that play it. <laughs> There's always people that play it, but I think it's risky. Save you, Tor. That's one of the hardest ones to figure out because I think it could be good. But then I'm like, no, it's not going to be able to one-shot the Zorks. Yeah, I can one-shot the Toad. Yeah, I can one-shot anything Blastoise throws at it. But I don't like it against Trev. I don't like it against Zork, Garantina. So, yeah. Right? And the Zorks in this format can one-shot it. So, yeah. I think it's a tough play. And what you got last? I'm gonna borrow this, this one right here. Last but not least, Unknown Well Lord. The Unknown deck with Frozen City in combination with Blastoise. Are we going to see it? Are we going to see anyone play it? Should a Ross Cotham play? I don't know if he's would play something that cheesy. <laughs> I, are, are we going to see it or not? We can see it. And... For y'all that don't know what it does, um, you use Blastoise, you turn one Archie, the Blastoise, and then you attach all the energy. You have Frozen City, you attach energy, and each energy, you put two damage counters on it, if it's not a Plasma Pokemon, right? So you do all this damage to Wellord, and then you energy reset. You can shuffle all energy attached to one of your Pokemon, or not shuffle, but pick up all the energy attached to one Pokemon back in your hand. Then you use Blastoise to put it back down again. Next thing you know, you have enough damage. Put Unown in the active, you win. You do that three times with 11 energy count. So are we going to see that kind of cheese? Why not? I mean, you know, people play that silly Latios dunk deck with the plus powers and all. And people play that crap, right? No. With Fast Raid. No. They used to, No. No, maybe online Oh, to cheese a couple wins. Well, and then there's also with the Wellord stall decks, the other unowned that has the hand thing, right? The hand you thing. You have 35 you doing cards hand in hand. Thing? No, I'm not doing the hand thing. You're doing the hand thing? I'm not doing the hand thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so enough of the hand thing. That's kind of where we're at with this. So, how to figure out what the play is? Play that, with what you feel comfortable with. That's the easy answer, <laughs> but uh, maybe we should do another video on what the play is. Have like a part two. This is part one, and we'll do a part two. What do you think? Yeah, that's fair enough. Okay, so we're going to cut here. This is part one. 
part two will break down uh, what the play is, right? The play. Okay, so till next time, be excellent to each other. And part